Hello and welcome back to the fourth day of Royal Ascot. I'm your co-host, Scott Wimsett, and we've got more glorious displays of gravity-defying hats, contagious energy, pageantry and fashion prowess right here on The Rap Show. I'm Louise Rowe and the stakes are as high for the jockeys as they are for the race goers today because every day at Royal Ascot is an opportunity to be bold in your style choices and embrace the grandeur. Mm, I don't know about you Louise but some of the best looks I've seen are where people have really gone to town and do a whole preparation on yeah, styling their days. looks. They've not just been stylish but innovative and that's really been such a special part of the job for me to see that. Definitely. It's taking the dress code and running with it, excuse the pun, and we simply don't see that anywhere else in the fashion calendar no you don't. don't now uh, we've just seen the gates open here at the race course and of course this is Royal Ascot so it's steeped in tradition including the formality of opening the gates which is done by our very own yeoman prickers known colloquially as the green coats thanks to their iconic green velvet uniforms on the subject of uniforms Friday at Royal Ascot is unofficially known as Armed Forces Day in support of all military personnel so I'm sure we can expect to see plenty of people here proudly wearing uniform and of course a lot of work going on behind the scenes to support fundraising activities for military charities. Now we'll also soon find out how you called the shots for Louise and I, be it who wore it best or the blind taste test. Can't wait. We'll also be catching up with guests, designers and milliners throughout the race course, grilling world-class chefs on their menus and getting to explore all the incredible hospitality and activities throughout this joyous event. This is the Royal Ascot Rap Show, Day 4. This is an opportunity to have a slightly different Ascot experience. Yes. Steeped in history. The artistry that's involved, so every day is unique. Oh my goodness. I couldn't believe it was actually real. Of course I have to do a royal purple. Top class stuff, it doesn't get any better. The sun is shining. Today's the day for it. We've got some very good horses lining up. Of course it is all about the fashion, sorry, it is all about the racing. He's absolutely relentless, they race up towards the line and he's going to fend them all off. It is a day four at Royal Ascot and after yesterday's fashion, can it be topped? Well, I'm here to find out. I'm going to be in the Royal Enclosure today, running around after people, as I have been all week, checking out where their outfits are from. We're here from Australia. Yeah. My hat today is uh, from one of my favourite milliners. Her name is Millinery Jewel. Ten years ago, she was the first Australian milliner oh, to wow. be presenting at Ascot. And how long have you been planning this outfit? Uh, it always starts as you finish last year, almost. <laughs> I'm stationed here uh, at the U.S. Embassy, active mm -hmm. duty Navy officer, and my wife Kristen and I have been here for about a year, and so we're grateful to be here and uh, look forward to a great day. So I've just spotted someone in a very, very brightly coloured dress. Well, it's actually from Oxfordshire. Okay. So in the middle of nowhere, yeah. a lovely little shop called Nelly and Duff. Oh. In a place okay. called Deddington. Okay. A market town. Yeah. And my hat is rented. And the bag as well matches so yes, perfectly with yes. the hat. This is from Sri Lanka. <laughs> okay. This is called a sari. Yep. So this is our national dress. Yeah. So. I like the colour mm -hmm. and this the this year is a lot of colour like you. <laughs> yeah. and her, Philippa Cardoso, okay. a very talented milliner, offered to match a hat oh to the jacket that I'm wearing today. This is one of our favourite slots of the day, obviously to talk about food. And to um, eat it. And to eat it. Yes. Uh, we're here at Holyrood Restaurant, which is in the Royal Enclosure Gardens, uh, to meet Sally Abbe on her first residency here at Royal Good Ascot. Good morning, how are you? Really Very well. well. What have you brought us? Um, so I've brought you a lovely slice of pork pie with pickled walnuts and then some homemade piccalilli to go oh on the my side. Gosh. That's a walnut right in the middle, it slap is, yeah. bang. Can I walnut, yeah. go straight in? Go for then. it, dig in. Oh my gosh, Sally, what a treat. And now, Sally, you're very much about empowering women, female chefs. I am, yes. Yeah, so I've got, my restaurant's called The Pem. Uh, it's in Westminster and it's named after Emily Wilding-Davison, who was a very prominent suffragette. Um, I've 
everything I do is uh, about empowering women and supporting women, as well as cooking delicious food, of course. But um, we've got an 80% female kitchen team, which is quite unusual. Amazing. Um, and yeah, I just think it's really important to empower the next generation of, of girls and women. Well, you've got very happy staff, because two minutes ago, they were all <laughs> dancing as if it was a disco outside. <laughs> yeah, they were Don't see that time. often. This <laughs> is absolutely delicious. Good. Do you mind if we stay for a while? Please do, yeah, you can stay as long as you'd like. Thank you, Sally. No Thank you, Sally. Now there's lots of bars here, but the best bit definitely has to be the view of the bandstand. Now we all know that after the races are done, the bandstand is where you want to come for a little sing-along. I'm 63 pounds down. Are you? Yes, yeah, so I made 17 pounds yesterday. Well, who was oh the horse gosh. today that you said? I said courage, mon ami. Oh, is that okay. today's or no, but that's not today's. Uh, oh, so yeah, there. these guys. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Sorry, hello. We're just chatting because we're quite experts on betting. <laughs> All of a yeah, sudden, day four bit in. of fashion, bit of racing, yeah. you know, we're top of our game now, aren't we? Yes, we are. I'm um I'm really enjoying this time we're spending together. Getting I... really close to my ladies. <laughs> I am indeed. We How are you, you finding it, Louise? We love you, Scott. We do. <laughs> we're having a right but let's talk about what we're wearing today. Okay. What have you got on, Scott? Well, I'm off to see uh, Christian Ferner Robson, uh, and he is our official licensee for the Toppers. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to have a chat to him. So I'm wearing Oliver Brown here, and obviously a bit of Oliver Brown vintage antique oh, topper. Uh, do you know how old your topper is? By 100, 175 years. 175 years old. See, that fascinates me. That many of the top hats here are. 200 years old. Passed down from family to family, you know, generation to generation. Can't wait to learn more. I am Hilo. So I'm Lock & Co, the hat, very famous hat is on St. James and um, a linen suit from River Island. Yeah. Shoes by Bobby's. Just uh, kind of in for a sleek look today. Yeah, yeah you not, too look. Many, not too many frills. You are bringing yeah. the frills. I know. Really quickly, I am head to toe actually in H&M. The hat is A1 Golding, just to add some feathers. And that is us for the day. Barbie call. Guys, I'm here with Damien Broderick, who is a fashion influencer from Dublin. Yes. First time. First time at Ascot, yeah. Yeah, what, what are your thoughts? Um, I mean, I've followed Ascot for years because being a fashion influencer, especially in like the classic menswear realm, Ascot is all about morning wear. There's a bit of pageantry to it, so I've always been a fan of Ascot, so I'm really, really lucky to be here today. I really dig the tattoos and the top hat vibe. Is you, You've got a nose ring as well. Do mm. you see them as almost a fashion accessory? Because it's a vibe. Yes, I like the like I dress in a suit and tie almost every day to some degree, and I almost like the juxtaposition of like being heavily tattooed and like piercings and stuff, um, but then being dressed technically is it like formal etiquette. I almost like pushing that boundary yeah. as far as it goes. I'm in a royal enclosure, covered in tattoos. So I mean, if you went back a hundred years ago, there's no way I'd be here. Um, you wouldn't have to go back a hundred, probably about five. <laughs> maybe, maybe five. Nah, you look um, amazing. It's a thanks. pleasure. Thank you so much and good luck. I am heading into the Valmont Experience, which is situated in the LK Bennett shop, just at the entrance of Royal Ascot. Now let's find out what this is all about. This is what I want to try. So apparently this is hydrating, but also obviously it's been so hot today and for the whole week at Royal Ascot. So this is a really, really good product. Would you like a top up? I would, I would love one. This has chamomile leaf inside. Aloe vera extract is super soothing and calming for the skin. You can keep it on top of your makeup or before your makeup. And especially now, the weather's really nice today. So yeah. whenever you need a top up, just come to us. Yeah. Amazing, I love that. And what's the final product? We do also offering the opportunity to have a little hand massage. We got a hand cream. <laughs> and if you'd like to try them on, more than Yes, please, I'm gonna put this down. That feels lovely. Main ingredients are shea butter and uh, avocado oil. So that keeps the hydration longer in the skin and you can feel immediately, absorbs very, very nicely and very fast.
Miss Jumpers Blonde, how are you? I'm very well, how are you? Well, I'm Tickety Boo, I'm so thrilled to see you and you being our first ever drag act here at Royal Ascot. Who'd have thought? You know, I haven't got my hooves on today as well. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your first impressions of this iconic kind of sporting calendar event? Um, I'm boiling, actually. <laughs> it's very hot, but you know, we have to be thankful for the summer, British summertime. Yes. Um, no, it's actually really amazing. Everyone's been really welcoming and it's just, it's, it's nice to, you know, the, for me, like, I've done Drag Race UK, which is, I guess, the ascot of drag. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Um, and I feel like everyone here is enjoying and, you know, here for the thrill of it. And so, the spirit of it all. And the spirit of it all. You know, when you love something, you really see it, the joy of, in somebody, you know, really it's out of them, yeah. like, like drag does for me. Uh, okay, so listen, you're in the village enclosure, yes. is that right? Yes, um, and what headlining. Sort of headlining in the village <laughs> enclosure. You. What kind of music are we playing? Uh, so tonight we're going for 70s. We're going for the good old 70s disco. Amazing. We're going like, to take it to Studio 54, dear. Yes, quite right. And the dress, perfect. What are you, who are you wearing today? Today I'm wearing Solace London, um, and my hat is by Noel Stewart. Oh my gosh. Oh. I can't wait to come down and cut some shapes and thank you so much for being with us at Royal Ascot 2023. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Mwah. Mwah. So just catching up here with Ikram here in the summer house. How are you, my love? I'm amazing. Thank you so much. So happy and grateful to be here. Okay, so have you been at Royal Ascot before? Yes, I have last year, so this is my second time. How exciting. <laughs> how, how are you finding it? So much fun. I'm like taking everything in, like the races and everyone's outfits and really enjoying the food and I love scones, so I've got a sweet tooth <laughs> though. I'm having a great time. <laughs> so talk to me about this incredible outfit, because as we were chatting earlier, you were like, I really wanted to, obviously from an Ascot perspective, really yeah. make an impact. Yeah. So yeah, you really have absolutely nailed oh, that, by the way. You. you look very elegant. Thank so you. talk to us about your look. So I was styled by my stylist, Sean Gabari. I'm currently wearing Alexandra Rich um, and shoes as well, Alexandra Rich. Hat is from Monique Lee. So that's the overall look and makeup by me. <laughs> <laughs> Model zone. Yes. Um, as you sort of, you know, st turn around here, yeah. the fabric really moves with the, the slight gentle summer breeze. It's really elegant, the sort of shape Perfect. and movement. And it goes with my scarf as well, so. Yeah. Everything is flowing um, <laughs> and it's perfect for pictures, you know, so happy to... <laughs> so what's going on with work at the moment? Can you just tell us some highlights? Um, big highlight was the uh, British Vogue and Louisa Via Roma show that I walked in Florence. It was beautiful, stunning um, and yeah, that's something that I recently done that oh. I'm super proud of. And now you're walking for us for Royal Ascot. Thank yes. you so much. <laughs> I'm here with my mate, Christian Fernand Robson from Oliver Brown and lovely Patrick. How are you doing, How are you doing gentlemen? Very well, very well indeed. Okay, so I understand that you're in your 25th year of being the official licensee of Toppers here at Royal Ascot. That's a long time. Yeah, we are really lucky to be part of it and we absolutely love doing it. Okay, so um, Patrick, are you able to um, give my hat a wee bit of a polish here? Because it's had a few outings this week and uh, you know it's been thrown around a, bit, a fair bit. Um, they're very valuable, these pieces, aren't they? They, they are very valuable. We've got hats here between a thousand and ten thousand pounds. So yes, silk hats are very rare in the large sizes. Small sizes are easy to get. Our heads have gone up, got, got bigger by two sizes. So have they really. Yeah. Now you have this one to me on loan. Um, can you just tell me a little bit about the sort of story behind this guy? So that silk hat would have been made. It has to be over 80 years ago because that's when they stopped making them. So that one is really quite an old one. I'd say about 150 years old. Wow. Probably had and, and the sort of value for that? The value on that in your size head, you've got a size 7 head. So the value on that with us is about £2,000. I love the fact you can actually tell that just by looking at me. You're definitely a size 7. Uh, so been a good week for you so far? We've had a record week. We had the busiest day in our shop in London we've ever had on Monday, which was great. Thanks to Ascot. Very lucky indeed. Brilliant. Um, and so I understand that you have a bit of a top tip to share with us as well in regards yeah. to if we sort of mislay our hat. Exactly. This, this year we've come up with a great idea, the air tag, which you can put inside the lining of the hat. So if you mislay your hat, lose your hat, you can go and find it. Look at your phone and go and find it. Oh my gosh. Well, that is a top tip. Thank you very much. Lovely to see you, sir. And uh, happy, happy Ascot. Thank you.
I'm just taking a load off for five minutes, sitting in the stands in the Royal Enclosure. This is a great area to be in and see the race course. You are inches away from the finish line, so you can see whether your money's come in on that bet. So for today's challenge, you lovely folk decided that we should do the food taste challenge. So Louise, we have three different types of food on your plate and three different types of food on my plate. Yes. We have to then feed each other, work out what is what, and the person who gets the most accurate, you know, d uh, work out exactly yes. what's what, uh, wins. We're in the beautiful summer house. Our producer Zoe has chosen the food, so we don't have a clue what's on it. I'm going to start. Scott's going to close his eyes, please, okay. Scott. No peeking. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Oh, you know what? Okay, open. <laughs> oh my god. That's a pickled onion. Yeah. Okay. Well done. Oh god, you're gonna you're gonna get me back for that. Okay, close okay. your eyes. I'm coming in. Okay, we negotiate the netting. Open wide. Trust me. Oh, um, three. Yes. Oh. Well done. Yeah. Okay, this is fun. Oh my god. Ready? Taste buds are literally on three go. Nervous. Open. <laughs> um, egg sandwich. Ooh. Is it? Well done. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, I feel like we're on a <laughs> bake off or something. We are on a bake off. Okay, close the eyes, open wide, and in. Oh, I know what this is. Give me a clue. I can't. Oh, you might have it with your cheese. Pickles. Yeah, well, it, yeah, it's a kind of chutney. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Spreading mm. hair, spreading hair. Okay, right. ready, last ready. One. Oh, okay, last one. Ready, open. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I was sort of hard on the outside and really melted on the inside. It's a very, very chic chocolate. Yes! Well Brilliant. done. Okay, last one for you. Um, okay. <laughs> Fish. <laughs> I'm going to be trying really polite about this. Okay, okay open wide and what a treat. <laughs> the suspense. It's not a macaroon. No. It's pudding. Yeah. It's not cake. Some kind of cake? I mean, I would call it some kind of little cheesecake situation. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank Delicious. You. Spoiling. Do I still that was get fun. that point? Yeah, you get that okay. point. Thanks, guys. That was fun. <laughs> Did I, who won? You. Did I? A, a tie. Okay, we have a tie. A tie. Thank you. So it's that point of the day with our fabulous racing broadcaster, Nick Luck. How are you doing? I've really enjoyed this. Yeah, me I too. I really have. Just me too. Trying to wrap it up very succinctly at the end of the day. Right. Royal Alaska has so many goodies, it's so hard to do. Nobody better to ask than yourself. So talking about uh, yesterday, obviously, it's quite an epic day, quite yeah. a hard one to follow. But what were the highlights from today? Two really important races, the Commonwealth Cup and the Coronation Stakes. Coronation Stakes to here, she's one of the best three-year-old fillies in Europe, so that was great to see. And the Commonwealth Cup, this was lovely, and it's been a bit of a theme quietly of the week. The underdogs winning, trainers who aren't that high profile, right. Shaquille for Julie Camacho, her first ever Royal Ascot winner at a really high level as well. Okay. That was lovely, lovely to see, and it clearly meant so much to them. Okay, so talking about sort of youth and experience, mm. you were sort of mentioning about the sort of people involved. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, we've talked a lot, haven't we, this week, Scott, about Frankie de Torre, clearly, his final Royal Ascot, and Ryan Moore, who leads him 5-4 as we speak in the in the jockey's table, so that's going to be exciting for tomorrow. Frankie de Torre rode a winner of the first race today, the Albany Stakes, for trainer Donica O'Brien. So Donica's the third member of his own family to train a winner here this wow. week. Wow. But get this. Donica O'Brien was born seven years after his jockey today, Frankie de Torre, wrote his first winner <laughs> at Royal Ascot. <laughs> That's impressive. Fun fact of the day. That's impressive. So just to close, Nick, talking about a big sort of flourish for mm. tomorrow, what are your thoughts? We want to finish on a high, and I think the Queen Elizabeth II Jubilee Stakes, renamed in honour of our, our late monarch, encompasses everything that's great about Royal Ascot, not just the naming, but also the international flavour of it. The key horses, one from Australia, one from Hong Kong, 
one from the United States and a filly who ran here on Tuesday from Great Britain. OK, and most significant, prestigious, important horse running this week? Uh, well, we might have just seen him, you know. Really? There's a horse called King of Steel who's just won. It's not one of the most high-profile races of the week, but he's such a big, beautiful, raw horse. He's only in the infancy of his career. He was second in the derby. He's won here today. Could end up being maybe the best of the lot. You just never know. Good luck. We'll see you tomorrow. Scott, thanks so much. Thanks. So we chose this 2013 Grand Vintage to celebrate the anniversary of the 10-year win of the late Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, iconic Gold Cup win. It's that time of day it where really we have a little is. know it moment. Today it's a magnum, Scott. Oh my gosh. Woo! Uh -huh. Woo! On the roof. On the roof. <laughs> What's been your favorite moment today? Oh my gosh, well, I loved the challenge. I thought it was so fun. And when you were very naughty though, because you popped a pickled onion in my mouth. Thanks for that. <laughs> That was almost my favourite moment, but mine has to be the Princess of Wales arriving in the carriage, just magnificently dressed head to toe in bright red. She looks beautiful. Stunning. Cheers. Cheers. That's it for day four on the wrap show here at Royal Ascot as we close out on yet another glorious day in our beautiful Summer House studio. I feel like we've saved the best till last though and the lineup tomorrow is going to finish off the week in impeccable style exactly as you'd expect. Unbelievably there's still so much more to uncover here at Royal Ascot and we're not signing off just yet. There's one more show to go so make sure you join us tomorrow at the same time and we can round off yet another spectacular year all together. Your final opportunity to call the shot will be you dictating which enclosure or area you want to see more of and Scott and I will personally take you there tomorrow. So we have the village enclosure, we have Windsor, we have the Queen Anne and of course the royal enclosure or maybe it's just yet another car park. Number one only please. Uh, for you, yes madame. <laughs> Let Louise and I know in the comments where you'd like us to go. You could quite easily, couldn't you, spend a day in every single enclosure. They really all have their own distinct personality. They absolutely do. Wherever we go, the atmosphere is certainly a joyous one, but exactly each enclosure has traits of its own, and that's all down to the camaraderie of the crowd. Well, I look forward to going out with a bang on day five. That's all from us on day four of the Royal Ascot Rap Show. See you tomorrow. Nice.